What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Can you do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button? Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all. Straight up, because you know the deal. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. Okay, what are you watching right here, folks? is you're watching a video from GameSpot.com where they are highlighting the recently uh, revealed Xbox Series X. And that console is the ninth gen Xbox console that was revealed at the Game Awards in 2019, okay? Around the same time of this recording. And it made a big buzz throughout social media, throughout the whole gaming stratosphere with a lot of these publications such as GameSpot, um, The Verge, whatever the case may be. Everybody is oohing and on about this console. And I get it. Um, the console, the way that it's built, looks very powerful. It may not be the most aesthetically pleasing um, console ever, but just the, the the dynamic of it the dimensions it looks like that it's going to be very very powerful and i believe it was phil spencer but somebody announced upon this reveal that this console that and you're looking at it right now that the console is four times more powerful than the s and twice the power of the xbox one x if i have that right which would put it around 12 teraflops of power okay and that's big for a console um, however, there's a lot of people out there that say this closes the gap between PC gaming and Microsoft destroys the game because it finally shows that they're serious. And, all. and I have to say this. I'm not saying that none of that is true. I'm just saying we're not at a point yet where we can make those definitive statements because we've been here before. So here's what I want to do to make sure that I address our short-term memory. I want to talk about the games that may or may not be associated with this thing. I want to talk about the whole closing of the gap of PC gaming that this is supposed to present. And also I want to talk about price. Okay. So let's start off with the games. Okay. So when this thing was revealed, it was revealed uh, they revealed it with Hellblade. There's going to be a Hellblade too, and the in-engine cutscenes for this Hellblade two looked nothing less than phenomenal. I, I can't doubt that at all. You know what I'm saying? But here's the thing. Um, number one, Hellblade is not a game that had that's going to have wide-reaching ramifications. Okay, like. The first Hellblade wasn't for everybody. It was a niche game, okay? And if you think about this, this also puts you in a mindset of when another console that Microsoft had released that was supposed to change the game came out. The Xbox One X. When the Xbox One X came out, they were wooing and wooing everybody with the reveal of uh, Forza Horizon 7, I believe it was. Or Forza 7. That game looked fantastic. But that, but racing is a niche genre. Yeah, it, it sold a couple of millions or got a couple of million players. But that's not going to have wide-reaching ramifications. Hence why having that as a launch title didn't do it for the X. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted, Halo Infinite is coming out with this Xbox uh, Series X uh, console. So that has to look. Halo Infinite has to look like Hellblade does, okay? In order for that, for, for it to have wide-reaching ramifications. But again, until I see Halo Infinite, I can only go by what I've been shown. And this, again, rings similar bells to when the X, Box One X was released with Forza and Super Lucky's Tales. So we got to see more games, okay? With that being said, on to the next thing. The whole PC gaming conundrum. Now, 
I admittedly, I am I, right now at the time of this recording, I prefer my PC gaming experience over all other experiences because of the fidelity and the performance that it provides. I would say right now at, at, at a second, maybe a temporary second, who knows? But at a second is Stadia because the ease of use of Stadia. But Stadia got to get its lineup together. Once it gets its lineup together, once it starts putting in the plethora of games that I can play on my PC, then it'll stay at a permanent second. But I love the easy use, you know what I'm saying? And then comes the consoles at, at, at a third, right? But the thing with PC gaming, my number one way to play games right now, is that there's the codex and the, and the, and the drivers and... Like, y'all saw it with my content. I had infinite problems using Streamlabs because I had to I had to uh, delete the driver and the GeForce experience and upload the driver by itself and do all that. There's too much manual involvement with PC gaming, even for the average consumer. So if somebody came up to the average consumer and said, hey, here goes a high-end gaming PC and gave it to them. I still think the majority, the majority of of of, of, of uh, casual gamers would go and buy a console still because of the console's plug and play factor. And a lot of people that were console gamers were looking at what Xbox was doing, and they were saying, "Well, what's the point of me buying the next Xbox? I might as well go buy a new PC." And that transition wasn't going to be that easy, but I could see a lot of people making it. And what the Xbox Series X does is it does keep those people in house. But here's what it doesn't do, okay? We gotta keep it real here. Here's what it doesn't do. It does not take someone that formerly games on PC and that's their preferred method and bring them over to consoles, okay? The 2080 Ti, which released in 2019, right now, is at 13.4 teraflops. The static component, as far as we know, within this Xbox Series X, which is supposed to be the top model from what we understand, is at 12 teraflops. Next year, June 2020, the 3000 series is releasing. We don't know what teraflops that's gonna be. So this thing is not pulling PC gamers, hardcore PC gamers from their, 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 their preferred way of playing. So PC gaming is safe. What it does do though, is it keeps those that were on the fence of, oh, I might get a PC next gen. It keeps them home. It does that, you know what I'm saying? So I, I wanted to address that and get, get us out of silly land with, with, with this, you know, that this is going to make all the PC gamers come to console. No, it, it, ridiculous, right? The third thing, price, okay? Now, everybody's saying that this is going to be $500, but think about it. We don't know that for sure. It's very well likely that this thing could be $600. Here's why I say that. There's a lot of rumors that the Lockhart console, the one console that's supposed to be a lesser powerful next-gen console, ninth-generation console for Xbox, that was rumored to just be false. Phil kind of smacked that down, but now it's resurfacing back up. And now with the naming of this console being the series, the Xbox Series X, it might very well be. And if the rumors are true, then that Lockhart console is a 2K console. So you gotta ask yourself, what's the purpose of that? It's not to invite casual gamers, because casual gamers, if they're gonna make an upgrade to the next generation, they don't know nothing or care about 2K. They don't even know what the hell that is. They don't know nothing about 1440p. They can care less about that. If they're making an upgrade, they want it, they want the more recognizable upgrade, which is 4K. They're gonna want this uh uh Xbox Series X, but it may not be obtainable to them if it's $500, I mean, if it's $600. And Sony's console, which is gonna offer 4K60, is 500. So under that pretense, a lesser, cheaper console would make sense. And right now, as I think about it, that's the only way the Lockhart console makes sense to me right now with the information that we have. 
Because again, a casual gamer knows nothing about 2K. If they're making an upgrade, they want the more recognizable feature, which is 4K. So having a 2K console only makes sense as if your 4K version is gonna be a little bit of un un unobtainable to them, all right? So with all those factors in, I say, look, consoles do have a benefit due to its construct nature. Even though this is only 12 teraflops and you got 13.4 teraflops in the 2080 Ti and the 3000 series are coming out next gen, I still say this though. Consoles have the benefit that when, when people are making console games, you don't have to develop for different hardware, except this is now the Xbox Series brand of console. So you're gonna have to develop and, 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 and have a parity with different other consoles within this line. So that does further complicate things. You know what I'm saying? With that said, so many questions, so many more things that need to come down the pike. My advice to all my Xbox brethren is, there's nothing wrong with being excited because it sounds like you're gonna have the power crown and I know how much that means to the Xbox community. And with that being said, it looks like that your third party games are gonna look awesome. You know, you know they're gonna look awesome. However, the biggest problem with Xbox is what is coming out of their camp. It's positive news to know that Hellblade 2 is coming, right? It's gonna look fantastic, but it's not gonna have wide reaching ramifications. We need to know how Halo Infinite is gonna look. We need to know what no other new IP, AAA Bangers is gonna come from Microsoft that's gonna utilize this power. Are they just gonna survive and lean on third parties doing the job again? With PlayStation heavy leaning on their first party development to crank out those bangers and look better than a potentially more expensive Xbox Series X. And with that being said, that's it from your boy MM2K. And let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below because like I always say at the end of the day, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. As always, check me out on the Broadband Bullies Network, the PNTS Network, and lastly, the Hard Knock Digital Culture where we do game streams, podcasts, and we also do martial arts and anime content we got a martial arts podcast finally coming more details on that all right and with that being said curb your enthusiasm be excited but curb it but still have a wonderful wonderful gaming day peace